symbolic in, in what way in that in the book of Acts chapter number 2 verses uh, 38 through 42 the Bible tells us and they continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine and also breaking bread so the question becomes then what is truly apostolic so on last week I provided you uh, some information and I think we read the scripture Hebrews chapter number 6 verses 1 through 5 and it deals with the apostolic doctrine and that apostolic doctrine has to deal with the laying in laying on of hands uh, the baptisms the judgment um, repentance from dead works this is what makes us apostolic okay um, and and you won't hear many uh, ministries mentioning that they are apostolic the Roman Catholic Church have called themselves the apostolic church but they don't go according uh, to the scripture when it uh, comes down to spiritual rituals and actually to the word of the Lord we are apostolic because we are biblically based apostolicity is not a denomination it is a way of life so you won't hear and you won't see on our signs and you won't see on our websites and you won't see um, in um, our uh, Facebook um, presentations the Crystal Cathedral the Church of the Lord Jesus Christ because we are connected with an organization however doctrinally we are biblical we are biblical and there are 53 um, items where we are biblical down to the baptism in the name of Jesus the infilling of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues as the Spirit of God given utterance living holy because that's what God has required us according to Timothy chapter number five um, um, impressing the presbyters um, not to forget and to stir up the power that's within them not forgetting to lay hands on people so that's why we lay hands on people because Paul taught us to lay hands we uh, repent from dead works according to Acts 2 chapter number 38 repent and be baptized every one of you this is the reason why we don't baptize in the Father Son and the Holy Ghost I will not tell anyone that they're going to go to hell if they're not baptized in the name but our biblical doctrine and the Bible tells us that we should be baptized in that wonderful name of Jesus it is in Acts chapter number 19 maybe around the 10th verse where um, there were men that were waiting for Paul to come and minister to them and Paul asked them have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe and they said we have not yet as ever heard of this thing called the Holy Ghost so Paul uh, uh, prays for them lays his hands on them and they were filled with the Holy Ghost and they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit of God give the utterance now it doesn't matter what a denomination says we've got to be biblical biblical in our origin biblical in our lifestyle if it can't be found in the Bible then you should question it or it should be suspect matter of fact I'll give you some information and from seminary school my professors taught me at least at Union that if there is a biblical doctrine that's going to be issued or will be spoke about if it's going to be reviewed then there should be at least two scriptures that should correspond to a particular biblical doctrine Amen. now those who believe in Matthew 28 verse number 19 that talks about being named being baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost wonderful scripture but they don't see the scripture for its entirety and its detail and this is the reason why we believe in the baptism in the Lord Jesus Christ because there's only one scripture that talks about being baptized in the name of the 
Father right. and of the Son and of the, of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Matthew 28 and 19. But if people would correspond and follow that scripture, he did not say Jesus, that is, to be baptized in the formula. He said in the name. Father is not a name. Amen. It's a proper noun. Amen. Son is not a name. Okay? Come it's on, not son. a name. It's proper. When he said in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, then that's exactly what he required, that we use the name. And so Colossians tells us there's no other name given among men by which we may be saved. That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow of things on the earth, in the earth, and under the earth. And every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of the Father. So there are scriptures after scriptures, uh, even in Corinthians tells us if we're going to do anything in word or deed, do it all in the name of Jesus. Amen. So apostolic doctrine is centered not just of the Father. We believe very strongly according to John uh, 10 and also John number 14 that the Father and the Son are one. One God above us all, in us all, through us all. Um, and that he became flesh according to John chapter 1 verse number 14 and the word became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory Amen. so we don't believe in three separate entities we believe that there is one God according to the scripture in us all through us all above us all and that there are three manifestations of the same God it is in the Old Testament, in the book of Isaiah, and also in the book of Jeremiah, when God begins to speak to Israel, and he tells Israel, Behold, the Lord your God is one God. So there are not three. So where did this Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost appear? It is in 1066, because I'm a history teacher, uh, at the Council of Nicaea, when the Catholic Church came together, it decided to go go from using the name prior to 1066 to using the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. It was never preached. It was never practiced um, in the biblical time. And after Jesus um, was crucified and resurrected, it was never taught the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. It is the Roman Catholic Church that introduced at the Council of Nicaea when uh, prophets and bishops came together under the Germain of the King Constantinople to change uh, the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost because um, the Greeks were very, very enthroned about several gods. And so in order to compete with Greek mythology and also Greek religion, it is Constantinople who introduced the thought that we shouldn't have just one God because Christianity may appear to be uh, very simplistic and not powerful. We now have the introduction, and it's from 1066, uh, according to the Roman Catholic Church, that it is spread. And this was called heresy among many of the bishops um, in the European um, um, uh, state and also in the Middle East. Constantinople kills the bishops that believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. It is then also during this particular time with the Roman Catholic Church that the Sabbath was changed. The Sabbath would change from Saturday to Sunday. That's right. And this is not biblical. It was introduced by the Roman Catholic Church and also uh, Pope number four. Um, and so we have a lot of things and traditions in churches that are traditions, but they're not based on the word. Amen. Come on, somebody. Right. So whatever I say, it should be able to be proved by the word of God. And so if I say something and you can't find it in the word, then either I'm a false prophet or you need to go somewhere where somebody is teaching you the word of God. The word says line upon line, 
precept upon precept. And so that's what we're talking about. Could you, do you all have the Jewish calendar in your hand? Yes, sir. Okay, amen. You got the Jewish calendar? Yes, sir. One of the things I think I mentioned to you all a part uh, about this month, in the month of September, we are getting ready this week to uh, have the introduction of what is called Rosh Hashanah. Now, if you can recall, ladies and gentlemen, last year I told, I mean, last week I told you that the Greek calendar starts its year with January. That's right. But the Jews' calendar is based on the lunar and the moon, and they start in September. Amen. So next week, uh, on the 20th, is the start of their new year. That's right. Okay? Amen. And, and, and the reason why this is important is because every year during Rosh Hashanah, we understand that the gates of heaven are open. Amen. And when the gates of heaven are open, we can expect or anticipate greatly events in uh, the sky, but also with God's people. Amen. Now, this is so important also. I want you to understand that the calendar of biblical events are not is not based on the United States. That's right. It's not based on Russia. No. It's not based on uh, uh, Young Bang King uh, uh, in Northern Korea. That's right. Okay? It's not based upon him. It's not based upon upon um, the Palestinians, not based on the Arabs and uh, Islam. The biblical calendar is based on the Jews. Amen. So when things begin to happen, ladies and gentlemen, I'm telling you and encouraging you, keep your eyes on Israel. Amen. Come on. Amen. Because the biblical calendar is not about Americans. Amen. Okay? We Americans have become so um, um, arrogant, <laughs> arrogant, self-centered that everything revolves around us. Right. Oh my! It does not ar arrive, and it does not involve or revolve us. Amen. It is that tiny nation of Israel that fought in the Six Day War in 1946 and then gained its independence in 1947. So anything that's coming regarding the events of time in the world has to deal with Israel. Amen. I'm keeping my eye not on Trump. I'm keeping my eye on Israel. Amen. I'm not keeping my eye on Northern Korea. I'm keeping my eye on Israel. What are they saying? What are they doing? They are preparing um, because the synagogue of uh, that great place that um, they built and uh, that was destroyed in 70 AD has been rebuilt and ready mm -hmm. and they're ready to do sacrifices before the tabernacle or that great place uh, fell which we call the temple so when we see that we want to be very knowledgeable what's going on now in Hebrews we're going to read the scripture that before Jesus appears a great falling away is going to take place in the church okay and I'm seeing it I'm, I'm seeing it in the crystal cathedral Jesus people are not as committed as strong as worshiping and powerful as they used to be Jesus and so Jesus says according to Matthew 24 and also in Hebrews that a great falling away is going to take place Jesus preachers are going to fall away Members are going to fall away. What used to be the truth mm. is now being compromised. Amen. One wife, mm. one husband, no sugar daddies on the side. Amen. Living holy. Come on now. Amen. Not, not letting your left hand know what your right hand is doing. But the Bible requires holiness. Amen. But in the last days, according to Matthew chapter, uh, chapter number 24, there's going to be a turning away. Jesus. It's going to be a turning away of the truth. There's going to be a turning away of um, the prophets, uh, what the prophets have spoken, and what I would call latter-day prophets. Now, if you look at your Jewish calendar, ladies and gentlemen, you will realize that um, this week is something very significant. Amen. And it's called Rosh 
Hashanah. It is the beginning of the Jewish New Year. Amen. And if you look at that calendar also, you see something happening on September the 30th. Do you see something on September the 30th? Yes. What is there on September the 30th? The Day of Atonement. The Day of Atonement. Does anybody see on the calendar the trumpets, the Feast of the Trumpets? Find it. Feast of Tabernacles. Just look. But this sister got something here. Feast of Tabernacles. But go ahead. Don't see it. Look, 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 look. During the Feast of Tabernacles, included in its feast is the Feast of Trumpets, which will happen next month when? October 5th and 6th. And the six. So on the thirtieth is what the day of atonement. We're gonna we're gonna understand the day of atonement. And then during that same week, that's right. Amen. We have the feast of tabernacles or feast of trumpets. The feast of trumpets. Amen. And the Bible in Revelation chapter twelve talks about the seals and the trumpets. 1 Corinthians chapter number 4 talks about the trumpet of God. Yes, sir. 1 Thessalonians, uh, is it 15, 4 and 15, or 15 and 4, talks about when the trump of God shall sound. Yes, and the Bible tells us when the trumpet of the Lord sounds, this is what we call the rapture. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. The rapture is the taking away of the body of Christ. Come on, Jesus. Now, hear this and hear this clearly. I do not believe in what many post millennials teach. And what post millennials teach is that everyone is going to go through the great tribulation. That it doesn't matter who you are, that every person is going to go through the great tribulation and that there is no pre-rapture or the taking away of the body of Christ. But Thessalonians tells me different. And Corinthians 15 tells me different. Amen. And so the Bible says that the trumpet of God shall sound. That's right. And when the trumpet of God shall sound, shall sound, the Bible tells us clearly that the dead in Christ shall rise. Amen. Hallelujah. Touch your neighbor and say, where are your loved ones that died? Where are your loved ones that died? I know you said they're in heaven looking down on us. Come on, sir. I have no scripture for that. Amen. Now, I do know many people use the scripture to be absent with the Lord. And to be absent in the body is to be present with the Lord. But those who die in Christ, the Bible equates this to being in the bosom of Abraham. Amen. The bosom of Abraham is not heaven itself. If it was heaven itself, then why would the trump be blown, according to Thessalonians and Corinthians, Amen. and the dead shall be raised? Come on, sir. If your loved ones are already in heaven, why would Jesus need to raise them from the grave? Amen. Look at somebody and say, where are they? Where are they? They are asleep. That's it. They are resting in a state, not necessarily in the body, not in purgatory, That's it. but they are in a place of sleep, Amen. waiting for the trumpet. Amen. Amen. Waiting for the last trumpet. 
Come on. My God. Mm. The Bible says, and the dead in Christ mm. shall be raised. That's it. And those of us that are alive, we're going to be changed to a new body. Amen. Oh, my God. In a, Amen. Amen. in a moment, in the twinkling of a eye, our body that is mortified, flesh and blood, a sinew and tissue, is going to be translated. Amen. Like Enoch and like Elijah. Go, my body's going to be changed and I'm going to take off corruption and my body's going to be incorruptible. Amen. Oh, amen. Touch somebody, give them a high five and say no more nearsightedness. No more nearsightedness. No more farsightedness. No more No more blood pressure pills. And no doctors and no, no more insurance. Come on somebody. Amen. Our body is going to be changed. Now the Bible tells us according to Hebrews chapter number 10 that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. So we know that this is not going to go to heaven. Thank God. Oh my God. I've been having trouble with my body ever since I was born. Come on. And it's called sin. But when I am transfigured, then I'm going to put on a heavenly body. Amen. Amen. Come on somebody. Amen. And the scripture says we're going to meet Jesus in the air and so shall we ever be Hallelujah. with him That's it. touch your neighbor and say I know I got that one because what I've just given you is all scripture Amen. Amen. so the great event next week is Rosh Hashanah mm -hmm. and then the following week is the day of atonement thank you jesus this is the day of atonement and we talked about this last week the day of atonement is that day one day that the great high priest enter into the holies of holies that's it thank you jesus and offers up prayer for the sin of god's people that's it. Amen. 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 You didn't know that, but now you know. Okay. Amen. According to Exodus, starting at chapter 20, then going through chapter number 30. So he prepares a day when they offer up a sacrifice, a blood sacrifice to atone or for the forgiveness of sins. Amen. During that next week, and then we're going to get into the scripture here. We then see the feast <laughs> of the trumpets. And whenever there is a cataclysmic event, according to scripture, it's introduced by the horn of God. Remember last week I told you that before there is judgment, God sends a warning. Amen. 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 Hear this. The warning is the trump. Amen. The last trump. Amen. Oh, y'all didn't get that one. <laughs> y'all too Sunday-fied to get that one. Did you hear me? The last. There is a first trump. That's right. Yes. That's it. In the White House. <laughs> y'all didn't get that. Look at your neighbor said, that's a warning, that's a warning, that's a warning. That's a warning. 99. <laughs> it's a warning. Come on. I don't care what your political affiliation is. Amen. It's a warning. Amen. 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 God is not trying to talk to the world. He's trying to talk to the church. Amen. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. And you know what he's telling the church? You did run well. Mm. But what stopped you from running? Jesus. You used to be powerful and anointed. You used to know the word, Jesus. but something prevented you 
from being committed and dedicated. Come on. So according to Isaiah, as a trump, God tells the prophet, cry loud, spare not, lift up your voice like a trumpet in Zion. Show my people their transgressions and the house of Jacob their sins. Come on somebody. Amen. So there is a literal trump. There is a physical trump. And then there is a spiritual trump. Amen. Amen. And God is blowing it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, what is this called? Has, has anyone ever seen this? Amen. It is a what? So far. So far you can see it? What is it? So far. So far. It's a show far. It's a show far. It is the horn of God. When Israel went into battle, they blew the trump. Amen. They had a trump for war. Amen. They had a trump for uh, festive occasions. Amen. If you remember three, four weeks ago when we were studying, taking the possession of the land, and when God gave Israel this little town, mm -hmm. you know what that town was called? And it fell down? Jericho. Jericho. Do you not know before Jericho fell, the priest That's right. blew the horn? That's right. Yes, sir. That's Amen. It. When we are taken out, there shall be a horn. Yes, sir. Trumpet sound. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's it. Amen. Pastor. Amen. This is so useful. Amen. Touch your neighbor and say, Amen. Get ready. 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 Look at your neighbor and say, This is not the time to backslide. This is not the time to backslide. This is not the time to get your freak on. This is not the time to get your freak on. This is, this is not the time to go crazy. This is Come not on. the time to turn from God. I know yes. you're being fought. I know you're going through trouble. Yes. But of all times, this is not the time. Thank you, Jesus. Encourage. To be decommitted from church. Amen. Because what the enemy wants to do is cut you off. That's right. Come on, sir. Amen. Amen. Don't y'all feel it? Amen. Okay, I feel it. Amen. I don't, sometimes I don't even want to look at you all. Come on, somebody. That's not God. That's the devil. I don't even want to be around you. And you got to learn how to rebuke that feeling. Because all it is is emotion or gas. One of the two. Because the Bible tells us in Hebrew, forsaking not yourself to assemble together. Amen. Amen. So there is power. Amen. Thank you. Where two or three are gathered together. Amen. I am in the He inhabits the praises. The praises of his people. Oh, come on, somebody. Amen. So when you praise him, it's like a Trump. Amen. Like a Trump. Amen. Oh, y'all don't get that one. That's, That's why I push you to praise God. Because your praise to God is like a trumpet. Hallelujah. And he says, when you praise me, I'll come in your presence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't care what hell you are going through. If we can get together and just give God the praise. For the Bible says, in the presence of the Lord is the fullness of joy. Mm, come on, sir. And the half hasn't even been told. Thank you, Lord. If you really were saturated mm. with the joy of God, 
you wouldn't be able to handle it. That's it. That's why many of you fall out. That's why many of you cry. And some of you shake it because your cup runs over. Amen. 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 Come on. Come on, sir. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And touch your neighbor one more time and say, let's do war in the spirit. Let's do war. Come on, touch, touch your neighbor and say, let's do war in the spirit. Hebrews chapter number 6. Thank you, Lord. 